<laughs> what is going on, everybody? Oh, I love this song. Oh, dear God. Woo! Welcome, <laughs> everybody. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lordy, Lordy, Lord, everybody. I am so happy to be here. What is going on? As you could see, the fruit of next labor is helping <laughs> has helped me set up events i still have not figured out how the bot blocks everybody but welcome welcome everybody to the live cast as you know every sunday and wednesday i do these special casts where i talk about news articles we discuss watch a couple of videos react to a couple of things well and and of course um so I'm so happy to be uh, with all of you all today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for compliments on the music. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get muted for the first 30 minutes, but everything else doesn't get muted, so it doesn't seem like it matters. <laughs> Your music made me forget about my coffee. Well, go ahead and get one real fast because we're about to start. Before we begin, I like to let uh, y'all know that uh, I do have my Discord kind of ready to go. I've got my boy Saturday night and I got my boy neck in it. They're, I asked them to see if they could look at it and tell me if I needed to add anything, but it's all pretty much already ripping to go, trying to figure out how to spread the invite so i'm thinking is like if you want to join my discord i would just say uh just send me a uh I, would, I don't know if it's like a whisper or I'll, I'll update the actual uh, the actual page, the the actual streaming page to let everybody know how y'all could join the discord as well. Um, tomorrow, I usually stream around the morning. Tomorrow is my day off. I have a another dentist appointment. This one is for a cleaning as nothing as torturous as a root canal, <laughs> thankfully. And after that, I'll be streaming a lot of Final Fantasy 12. I want to finish that game and I, I'll still keep playing it to unlock everything. But uh, it's getting to the point where I think I want to swap to another game. So I am so happy that everybody is here joining. We'll hope we give it a little bit of time. Mr. Saturday Night, as always, super awesome. Uh, on a personal note, Saturday Night is the first member of the collective of the Fico's Gaming Mind Discord group. Uh, he beat everybody to it. <laughs> so, so the man is the first one. Oh, he's going to go take a quick... Man, don't leave and take a quick shower. But anyway, we got a pretty interesting... Uh, uh, program. We'll call it a program. Interesting program uh i'm so sad that he's going to take a shower now because we're going to talk about the stuff that, like the we're going to be lingering on for a little bit we're going to be talking about um more about video games and violence the esa and of course ea and we're going to be looking at a couple of articles a couple of announcements and a couple of videos as well too and at the very end we'll continue to discuss the burnout in the gaming industry by reading more from that gamma sutra article so let's not waste any time and let's go on to the feature of our juicy juicy show today um you all know what happened a couple of a days ago a shooting in heartland in parkland uh florida 17 dead we don't have to go over that again but since then it looks as though we have been hearing just about everything we've been hearing about wanting to arm the teachers arm the teachers equip them with guns to be able to kill students or kids, or shooters, or anyone. <laughs> um, so they're, they want to have teachers armed because having ways for kids to access guns hasn't been easy enough as it is. Uh, I remember I took my teacher's, uh, for, uh, my teacher took my Nintendo Power away from me and I took it back. 
Easy. <laughs> what did I do? I just opened up her drawer. The same place where they'd be holding the guns. But anyway. Water under the bridge. But now, apparently, there's a representative in Providence, Rhode Island, that is trying to get a bill to tax violent video games to pay for something that's called a mental health counseling in schools. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. There is a representative by the name of Robert Nardorillo III. We'll just call him Rob. Uh, Rhode Island Rep Representative Rob uh, wants to introduce legislation that will actually... Uh, that will tax the sale of M-rated or higher games to go to some kind of fund to help schools okay all right okay <laughs> okay all right okay all right okay all right okay so let's let's read the article um <laughs> this is beyond stupid okay representative rob will introduce legislation to increase mental health and counseling resources in school by implementing a tax on video games rated mature or higher. There is evidence that children exposed to violent video games at a young age tend to act more aggressively than those who are not. This bill would give schools the additional resources needed to help students deal with, the aggre with that aggression <laughs> in a positive way. Oh my god, there is a reason why I decided to put this this article as the main focus instead of the next one, which I'm going to spend a little more time talking. So let's let's go over everything he just said. Okay. There is evidence that children exposed to violent video games at a young age tend to act more aggressively than those who are not. Um well, I don't think that we don't we don't have to discuss that vi video games do make you more aggressive. They don't make you more violent. Video games don't turn you into an inherently violent person. There is evidence that yes, when you play something like a video game, your body reacts to it and increases your aggression. You know what else that does? Also, uh, your body gets that while you're driving down the road, when you're listening to music. You noticed a moment ago where I was just going like crazy when I was listening to Suicide Silence. Uh, that was that's part of it. I went to a concert a few days ago. It raises your aggression. Bottom line is that saying that something that makes per, a, a child aggressive and we have to and they're saying that there's evidence for it. It's a kind of like a no duh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Simply give us the right to spank kids again. Well, I I am the product of that and let me tell you, I was a little scared of my parents, but I, I don't know. We're, that's a whole different. That's a whole different subject. But my parents were really great to me, and uh, I turned out okay. <laughs> but but yes, he's again making he's again making the argument that violent video games are is are what's making children more aggressive, and not you know kids making fun of other kids mental disorders um their home life exposure to you know uh other things like tv movies i agree that kids should not young kids like babies uh, should not be exposed to violent video games because their minds are not prepared to take in all of that and parents aren't responsible enough to make this happen so obviously nobody's prepared for that okay however he says something else he says uh 
that the bill would give schools the additional resources, which I find that very funny given the fact that the government has done pretty much everything to take away schools' resources, and now they're talking about giving back to the schools. Okay, I find that I find that to be kind of ironic. And school and resources needed to help students deal with the aggression in a positive way. Do you know how you could deal with aggression in a positive way? Do you know what I would do? I would put a video game lounge in every public school. And then when they're going to recess, you give those kids an opportunity to go in there and play video games and there would be friendly competition simply the same way that you have video uh, that you have a basketball court that you have a kickball court that you have everything there you don't um you don't again take video games and you're like oh no they're terrible they're evil they're 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 awful uh, we have to we have to do something about them, but we can't ban the sale of them. So why don't we just tax them? And that's exactly what he what it follows up saying that because states cannot ban the sale of certain video games to minors, uh, Rob, his <laughs> Rob's proposal would allocate money to counteract the aggression they may cause. Counteract the aggression they may cause may may as in maybe as in video games could be the reason that they're causing them so you don't know for sure if the video games that are being sold the violent video games that are being sold are going to actually be the cause and guess what it's been debunked since the 80s that video games cause any of these. Okay, they cause aggression, yes, but everything causes aggression. And guess what? Video games are a healthy outlook into venting all of this aggression that you have pent up. Video games did a lot for me growing up, and it's done a ton for people. And somehow, still to this day, people are still demonizing gamers, and they're demonizing video games, and they're being called aggressive, and nothing, and they don't matter. But at its worst, it seems like when something bad happens, well, then here they come again. So... I mean, this this is back to what we were talking about a few weeks ago. So, um, oh, come on, hold on. <laughs> so, why not make it where you have to be ID'd when buying? Vi oh, dear Lord, no! <laughs> Don't make it easy for them. Okay, so. Here we go. Uh, apparently, the proposal is that the legislation would levy an additional, an additional 10% sales tax to video games sold in Rhode Island with a rating of M or higher. You're going to get charged an extra 10% of tax because video games might make your kids more aggressive maybe maybe <laughs> why on earth would you do that if you're not absolutely sure hmm couldn't be that you were trying to capitalize on outrage of this thing and trying to get like money to go somewhere else right nah no nah, no nah. politicians would never do that never steal money they're all they're all all of them are nice wonderful people um <laughs> okay so uh and he says revenue generated by this tax would be placed in a special account for school districts to use to pay for counseling mental health programs and other conflict resolution activities you know like those programs that are not there at the moment the counseling that's not being offered at the moment which has been you know would be nice to have you know considering that there have been multiple school shootings hmm? 
So now you're saying that now you think that video games, video games are the cause of this. Now, now you want to do something about it, but you know that video games aren't the cause. They tell you about it. You don't care. Let's get a whole bunch of money and uh, from and uh, have gamers pay for it. That's right. The gamers that you demonize, the video games that you demonize, the culture that you demonize. Now you want them to pay for your program to offer a possible solution to a problem that's not a problem. That video games are a cause of this. Uh, why don't you just, I don't know, why don't you just do something that does not involve like sticking it to gamers in Rhode Island? Thankfully, this is only only in Rhode Island, but you want to take a bet that if this passes that other people won't take advantage of this. Our goal is to make every school in Rhode Island a safe and calm place for students to learn by offering children resources that manage their aggression today, we could ensure a more peaceful tomorrow. Yes, translation Video games are awful and we need to get them away from children, but we don't know how to do that. So instead what we'll do is we'll charge the gamers that we demonize to pay for a program that we know will not work and eventually people will forget about. So that way we'll take all the money from all of the taxes that are being charged extra to gamers because we want to stick it to them because we want to ban them and we can't. And then when a school shooting happens, we're like, oh, oh, but it didn't happen happen here so it must be working right oh this is just this is all mm. all of this all of this is abhorrent you still don't get it none of you will ever get it everyone here does get it in my in my channel everyone gets it everyone understands it but for some reason, it's, this is still an ongoing thing. Now, instead of actually doing something, now you want us to do it for you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so no, uh, Mr. Rob, uh, you could go shove it up your ass. And uh, I'd say uh, shove it up your ass hard. Honestly. You don't know what makes gamers tick. You don't know what video games are. You don't understand them. You still think that they're that they make people violent. You don't understand what aggression is. You don't understand what the human body is. You don't understand gaming culture. You don't understand school shootings. You don't understand anything, but you want to be looking like the good guy because at the end of the day, this is all about you. This is all about you being all virtuous and trying to find a way to get money from people more than just rather just putting some of your money in to actually do something about it. So good job. You you have accomplished absolutely nothing. Hey, Mr. Saturday night. Welcome back. Uh, hope you had a good shower. <laughs> yes, outsiders talking about things like they know a single thing about gaming. No, I I honestly agree, and that's the that's the funny thing about this whole thing is that they hope this is all a hope thing. This is like tossing a hail mary. They don't know this if this will work or not. And guess what? When you have already considered the scientific facts that video games do not cause video game uh, video games do not cause people to go violent to the point where they're going to shoot up a school but they but they take that yeah video games cause aggression so yes aggression is a thing that that is with school shooters yes it's got to be aggression okay then video games are what's causes school shootings it's the, the correlation causation of all of what i've just said is all screwed up they never know at all but we have been discussing this for a couple of days now we know this but it looks like now rhode island actually wants to yeah because but now rhode island wants to wants to <laughs> wants to do something about it uh, 
a solution to a non-problem. Video games do not cause people to go violent. Video games are not the cause of school shootings, but Rhode Island still wants to make video game players support mental issues, which are the cause, could be the cause and correlation and causation of school shooters to go to the, for what they go to to commit these school shootings the uh, an actual probable cause so they're using they're saying that a, a a cause that isn't the cause is the cause but now they want me that if i was in rhode island they want me to support the cause that could actually be the cause i mean this is incredible why don't you just do something on your own and, and leave video games out of it if video games are not the cause why on earth would you use video game tax money to fund mental health issues <laughs> a possible cause of this whole thing this is the irony bomb blowing up in your face and you don't even you don't even realize it but that's only in rhode island this uh uh this is is just incredible but ladies and gentlemen the show has just begun because we're going to talk a little bit about the Elect Entertainment Software Association or the ESA. You might have heard of the ESA. You might not have heard of the ESA. <clears throat> Excuse me for a moment. Mm. So, who is the ESA? Okay, well, the ESA, the Entertainment Software Association, uh, per their site, says is the U.S. Association dedicated to the serving to serving the business of public affairs needs of companies that publish computer and video games for video game consoles handheld devices personal computers and the internet the association represents these industry leaders across the nation and on the global stage esa offers a wide range of services to its members including global content protection program business and consumer research government relations and intellectual property protection efforts they also own and operate e3 so the esa members of the esa this is the governing body for video game entertainment okay so uh, they also created the ESRB, the rating system for ESRB. They own E3. They manage. They they are they're the they're the reason that E3 happens every year. And uh, to be a member of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to be a member, this is the perks that you get. You get perks like uh, E3 Expo access, which gives you discounts to be a part of E3. You get to help shape the E3 experience through participate participation in the trade show committee. Uh, members will also get meeting and booth space at a discounted rate, as well as press lists and hotel blocks, which basically just means if you're a member, if you're a publisher, for the end member of the ESA, you're pretty much guaranteed to be given a good, uh, good treatment at E3. And you get uh, access to research and market data, which you gain, uh, according to this, immediate access to a growing body of market data and research that examines a variety of issues, uh, including overall consumer engagement with video games, esports, mobile gaming, gamer, gamer political engagement, enhanced reality, video games, and senior citizens. And a whole bunch of cool other sh other things, robust content protection services, which includes uh, protection of IPs such as uh, takedown notices, search engine removal, marketplace monitoring, and many other strategies. And also conducts outreach, education, and training in terms of content IP uh, protection or the IP protections. They also have working groups. They also have government relations. Keep that one in mind. Government relations, which have us, they have lobbyists. The ESA have lobbyists who are a part of 
Capitol Hill, and they have uh, government relations, which works covers a variety of concerns, which is uh, privacy, cybersecurity, tax, e-commerce, First Amendment issues, content protection, trades and patents, direct assistance at the state level which means that they also promote visits to state and local offices, which offers what they call a tremendous value in keeping the video game industry vibrant and protected. You're doing a terrible job, by the way. And also they give they give charitable givings, which they have something that called the uh, the ESA Foundation, which is uh, the charitable organization that provides scholarships for girls and minorities studying video game related subjects, which is good. And they also have something that's called the Video Game Voters Network in a million strong group members dedicated to gamers ready and willing to defend video games from unfair legislation, regulation, and political attacks. Keep that in mind. Also, they support the VGVN, which in ESA members can also work with VGVN on specific campaigns. Now, where is all of this going? Why did I spend a good amount of time talking about the ESA? Why am I talking about the ESA? Because there's a video out there that's called Gaming Industry Lobbyists Question about loot boxes now the youtuber is called chris lee chris lee is actually the hawaii state rep representative who wants to help uh dictate and regulate the use of loot boxes and microtransactions because people are abusing the use of them and people like ea have taken advantage of of stiffing people for years with this now, why now why would uh, Chris Lee, the rep, be talking with the ESA, with a lobbyist from the ESA? Now, with your permission, I'm going to play the 13-minute long video that has Chris Lee talking with the ESA lobbyist. Now, why do I bother talking about all of this? Well, because one of the members of the entertainment software association is would you look at that ea ea activision bethesda konami and ubisoft they're all members of the esa huh electronic arts they're a part of the governing body that regulates what happens in video games hmm gee i wonder if electronic arts might be taking advantage of this so well anyway guys uh this is what i mean uh so the esa apparently are in the pockets these people the members of the esa are also members of the same companies that do these anti-consumer practices but chris lee wanted to find out what was happening so with your permission we're going to we're going to be looking at this but i give you a fair warning you are going to see a shirtless man at the beginning of this oh i almost saw some ladies and gentlemen this is a state rep for hawaii <laughs> oh my god look at hawaii look at how beautiful it is this is the good guy by the way ladies and gentlemen this guy is the good guy Don't worry, he's going. It's going to get to the point. So, why, just we're, we we just need to. So it's been a little while since I've had time to put together an update. But last November, we started a discussion on gambling mechanisms in video games and the mental health, addiction, and financial consequences they can have for everyone, and particularly developing kids. Oh my God, I, I love this man. I love this man. This is the proof that there is a person in government and in politics that gives a shit about gamers. To say nothing, of course, of what they've done to the unfortunate quality of video games to begin with. And so I want to send a big 
thank you, first of all, to everyone who responded and stepped up to help get involved to ultimately fix the gaming industry. We've made contact with elected officials in dozens of states, with U.S. senators and members of Congress. People are starting to really pay attention. Oh, okay. So I know, I know that this is all kind of like po politics, and uh, this may be a little uh, on the on the boring side, but you guys need to keep in mind that that Chris Lee, he's one of the good guys. He definitely wants. Uh, EA to not get away with this so it's gonna get to the good part so here in Hawaii this week it was a big week it all began a few days ago with another issue that we've been working on here which is of course fixing net neutrality in Hawaii our local internet service providers were recently bought out by the usual internet giants but it means the state of Hawaii has to approve the sale and so I have to give credit to our governor who really stepped up to the plate and required these companies to abide by net neutrality as a condition of approving their takeover. Oh yeah, baby. Fuck you. You don't get to own the internet. We own the internet. For at least the next three years until we can elect a new president who will install FCC commissioners who will look out for the interest of the people rather than just looking out for the interest of these companies. Ooh, Hawaii will continue to have an open That's a jab. That's a jab. Uh, this morning I signed an executive order uh, to maintain net neutrality. You know, it's so important that internet access in this day and age is available to everyone. It, it okay, I'm sorry guys, but I need to stop. If you want to live somewhere, live in Hawaii. <laughs> that's my, that's, that's it. Live in Hawaii. Go move to Hawaii. That's where it's at. That's where the sense is. That's where the sane people of the U.S. are. <laughs> by all intents and purposes, a fundamental right. That includes me, I'm not saying, by the way. In order to live their lives, to participate in democracy. But we also joined together to announce that the state of Hawaii will only contract with ISPs that abide by net neutrality going forward. And as the single largest employer in the state, that's not insignificant. Net neutrality, guys, right. here we go. Right. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Free cheers to the old lady. <laughs> getting the signatures that fast is what made it happen. I'm so glad I also brought the pecan pie I had at the window. But back to gambling and video games and loot boxes for a moment. Here's where things really got going this week. In December and January, we had drafted bills to address the loot box situation, and those bills have been moving through the legislative process. Yeah, we've been. To, we talked about that a few days ago. We were talking about how Hawaii was uh, basically enacting and introducing some bills to not allow the people who who generate loot box systems for games to be sold in Hawaii. Which means great, awesome one place that you won't contribute to EA at all. One bill in particular requires the odds of winning items purchased in loot boxes to be disclosed. So players know whether or not they're being taken advantage of. Okay, so they're talking about the drop rates. They're talking about the drop rates to how to have people like reveal the drop rates. And uh, we are going to talk about that later because a riot has decided to do that, which is great. Discuss the drop rates so that way you have a, bit of a way to know what are your odds. Because you know what? The odds are being revealed everywhere when you gamble. So why not discuss the drop rates when you're doing and loot we're talking about loot boxes? Secondly, it also requires that games with loot boxes that can be purchased disclose on the box or out on the screen at time of purchase that these games have loot boxes within them. Yes. So parents can yes. make an informed decision about Yes. They so they know that they're buying a game that has gambling in it. Just like every state around the country, bills moving through Hawaii um, and through our legislative process go through a public hearing in which everyone can offer their thoughts and support or oppose the bill and legislators can hear public feedback the idea being that we can ultimately make amendments and make the bill better. By the way, uh, if uh, if you live in the United States, a couple of these hearings, you could go there. They're for free. You're paying for, for all of this. If you live in the States, you're paying for all of this to happen. So you could attend these public hearings. You could go to any, like I was a part of, of, a, of a trial. You could go to any trial and watch what's going on. You could just like observe and and be a part of all of this so if you want to get as involved as you want there you go this is also part of the process where lobbyists chime in 
And for several months, the ESA, the Entertainment Software Association of America, has been flying its You're sleepy? <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. The ESA is the trade organization um, and lobbying arm of all our... I said this wasn't that entertaining. Division, take two, um, oh, hold on. This is the important part. Okay. Out to Hawaii. The ESA is the trade organization um, and lobbying arm of all our favorite companies, EA, Activision, Take-Two, uh, Ubisoft, basically every major player in the gaming industry. Which in translation, it just means that the ESA are the representatives in government that represent the video game industry and they're the lobbyists. And they, as, as I just mentioned earlier, EA is a part of that organization, so they have an invest, invested interest in this. The ESA lobbyists have been meeting uh, behind the scenes with legislators, but what was really fascinating is to see the industry show up to lobby against the disclosing of odds in loot boxes bill. Against? As far as I know, this is the first time that their lobbyists have ever had to answer questions um, on this subject matter in front of a camera. So... Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So according to what Chris said, the ESA is against disclosure of the drop rates. Hmm. Disclosure against the drop rates. Hmm. 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 You mean people like EA and Activision and Ubisoft and Take-Two and all those companies that have loot boxes and don't want people to know that what are the drop rates? Hmm. 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 Here's the thing, with Streamlabs is being a bit of a pain, but what I'd recommend is uh, you could use uh, slobs, but you could also use, um, you could also use, uh, yeah, Streamlabs is a little bit, a little, but actually, uh, it's Streamlabs is actually a very, like, lightweight. It's very lightweight. So, I'm sorry that you're having problems with. All right, so the dude, the dude, the old man, he's with the ESA. Um... Uh, clearly, just reading through, I think, the uh, comments here and the testimony, the industry, the gaming industry is now a $36 billion industry, which is um, sizable, three times the size plus of the um, film industry in this country. Um, and its rate of growth has been very rapid in the last uh, five, six years, which right. I'm sure provides a significant sense of pride and accomplishment to uh, <laughs> 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 okay okay uh, i'm gonna play this part again so you guys can so you guys can can understand its rate of growth has been very rapid in the last uh, five six years which right. i'm sure provides a significant sense of pride and accomplishment that last part pride and accomplishment you know why i'm laughing because that's exactly what the EA representative said when he was discussing why the characters in Star Wars Battlefront 2, you know, the most downvoted comment on Reddit, you know, they did it so they increased the prices of getting those heroes so that you feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. <laughs> and now Chris Lee here is talking about how the video game industry has grown exponentially and it should have a sense of pride of accomplishment. This is this man. I love him so much. <laughs> Some of these companies. Um, but I think one of the things that really is precipitate. Look, he's laughing. The dude in the shirt is laughing. He knows what he did. <laughs> this question is some of the feedback from the community, um, not just here in Hawaii, but of course elsewhere as well. And since I've been talking about um, uh, this issue, um, uh, which originated uh, this bill, and we've heard from hundreds, if not thousands at this point, of folks, um, stories of uh, addiction and financial harm and mm -hmm. horror stories from yep. families uh, yep. right here in Hawaii. In our Gambling. Um, Gambling. The question is, is it concerning that there are significant numbers of people, and especially kids in many cases, who are ending up with problems with addiction as a result of some of these mechanisms. Okay, so the question was, 
should the is the ESA concerned that video games are uh, they're ending up in kids and they're ending up with gam with a gambling like addiction problems? Hmm. The ESA just got asked this, so hmm. I wonder what the old dude from the ESA who has never been on camera to represent these companies that are implementing these things is gonna say. Well. Representative Lee, uh, I think first of all, I think that was one of the things that was recognized by the industry to create the, uh, the, the board, the review board, the self-imposed review rating board. And if uh, the rating board, are you talking about rating video games like the ESRB? Um, well, that wasn't a question about the ratings, but. Uh, we'll we'll see where this is going. If I can recall, I think there is one category for children. Uh, uh, they, they actually have similar to movies. So you don't know the ESRB ratings. You're a representative of the ESRB of the ESA that that created the rating system for video games. And you don't know if there is a kid's rating? You know, you could say movies are- the ESRB, yeah, referring to. The ERSB. Um, the, the what? You don't know what that is? That they have those ratings and they have it for children. So I think the, the industry recognized that there was an issue and so they brought this upon themselves. No, 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 no. That's not what he was asking. He was asking if the ESA was concerned about kids getting into gambling problems. And you're talking about how you guys created what the ESRB, the ES, the E, e the R E R S B, according to you. As a matter of fact, they've taken it one step further. They've gone international to get this uh, rating board approved on, on, on their uh, game, so. Yeah, but you're still not answering the question. You're, the ESRB does not keep kids from getting games and getting into gambling problems. Do you remember that story that I talked about where there was this one guy that spent thousands of dollars in FIFA? That guy was overseas. So no, ESA dude, the, ESR, the ESA has not done anything to avoid this from happening because you, your members, are part of the problem. I think they've been very proactive. No, they haven't. I appreciate that. And just on that uh, comment for a moment, um, the issue of which has been raised here with respect to in-game uh, gambling-like mechanics, loot boxes, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, that's something the ESRB uh, currently rates? Uh, I, I couldn't answer that. I'd have to go back. Oh, you don't know if the gambling and loot boxes in video games are being, uh, are being, are part of that ESRB. Hmm. Hmm. Trying to sugarcoat the situation and trying to blend into a new topic to let the people forgetting the main topic. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, it's it's like it's like you're a politician, <laughs> right? Except that you're talking to a politician that cares about people and he is going to school you in just a second, I think. Mr. Wade, are you can you answer that question? The answer is no. <gasps> what is that? The ESRB doesn't have something to indicate the game has gambling mechanics? <gasps> Uh-oh. The, the inclusion of, uh, of uh, gambling-like mechanics, specifically uh, variable reward microtransactions, do not affect the ESRB rating. In fact, the ESRB, uh, one of their few public statements about the issue has been, this is legally not gambling, basically. 
Wow. Hold up. The ESA. Remember when the ESA said that loot boxes wasn't gambling? Hmm. I actually got to give it credit to uh, to Hawaiian Kevin Owens here because he's actually being honest. He's saying, hey, no, we don't think of this as gambling. We don't consider this as gambling, even though people do get into gambling problem like situations when they're going into these microtransactions. But no, the ESR, the ESA, I keep calling one of calling it the ESRB. No, the ESA does not have a distinction of things being gambling because the ratings, the ratings themselves, they have a classification and gambling is not one of them. So, but that's what Chris Lee wants to do. So one of the things that um, I think also the ESA testimony reflected was that this is not gambling, um, or these sorts of mechanisms are not gambling because they, um, uh, well, for a number of reasons that I'll get into in a minute. Uh, the UK Gambling Commission, uh, among others, seems to um, identify this, or portions of this at least, as gambling. Um, their annual report recently just found that 45% of 11 to 16 year olds are aware of what's called skins betting, where you have, um, uh, products which you earn out of randomized loot boxes, which you can purchase, which can then be traded for cash. Uh, so fundamentally, that seems to be gambling. If you <laughs> He's talking about CSGO Lotto, Counter-Strike skins, and how you could go and bet those skins and you can get actual real-world cash. And this is all being allowed inside of Steam, where... You know, 11 to 16 year olds are aware that getting skins and putting them online and betting for skins, that's, which is, as he said, it's gambling. And this is all being powered by loot boxes. You can cash out these things for real monetary value. Is it not? <laughs> no, not I cannot answer that. Oh, you can't answer that? You're the ESR. You. Why do I keep calling it the ESRB? Stop it, Fico. You can't answer that. I thought you guys were the governing body of video games. Um, let's move on, I, Chair. If, with your indulgence, I just have a couple more questions. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, when it comes to, and just for Bruce again, when it comes to um, loot boxes and that sort of thing. How does a player know their odds of winning something that they're paying for? Okay, this is where they're talking about the drop rates. Well, first of all, I think the loot box, isn't that, that if I recall, that's, that's an option. Oh, that is not the point! That is not the point, you dumbass! Yes, loot boxes are optional, but you don't, but you are missing the point of the question. If somebody wants to loot, to purchase a loot box, you don't think maybe you want to know what the drop rates are for set loot boxes, so you know what the odds are? Yes, and you're right, they're in the wrong. Remember, this guy represents EA, Take-Two, Activision, Ubisoft, every company, every company that has a loot box system in their games. Blizzard, they have a loot box system in their game. This is the guy that's representing them. So, of course, his interest in, is just to kind of make loot boxes like, oh, that's not a big deal. You know, people can buy them if they want to. But you know what? It is in the members of that ESA's best interest for kids to continue because they make millions and millions of dollars. They want kids to buy these things constantly. So no, you're missing the point of the whole question. You have the option of purchasing, or you can, if I'm correct me, but I think you can get to the end game, the end, the same way without the loot box. Yes, you're right. But your loot box, your progression to the end of the game is getting gimped on purpose by your companies to make sure that they do buy loot boxes. They offer mechanics like pay to win so that you could go through this 
easier. You are in the wrong. You know you're in the wrong, and you don't care. Is that if I'm understanding what you're... That's not the question! That's not... You don't... You're not answering the question. You're asking him another question. I think if people are... You have the option. Something. They, you have the option to, to <coughs> go with the loop box. Sure. Anybody has an option not to walk into a casino, right? Well, I mean... <laughs> Zing! Yeah, you also... But, I, I, but forgive me, I just... When you buy a loot box, um, if that's something you feel compelled to do as you're playing, how do you know what the odds are of winning something I, in that? Okay. Uh, uh, what, 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 what was that? Uh, I'm sorry. What 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 was that? What, what, can, can you say that again? What was that? Yes. Uh, uh, Wait, can you? Um, uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, there are no disclosures on on the odds, so I haven't seen any at least. Uh, and I play a lot of games, so. You mean you don't know what the what the drop rates are? Hmm. Yes. And you have the option to walk into a casino. Kids are not allowed to walk into a casino. And guess what? Kids are being allowed to play these games. Most of these games are being bought by teenagers, exposing them to these loot boxes and these microtransactions. You know that this is wrong. I guess, are you guys aware that China has already taken steps to require odds of disclosure for these sorts of in-game mechanisms? No. Good job, China. Thank you, China. I'm, I'm well, let, me, let, me let me ask you a question. Okay, so remember when I said that the ESR, the ah, uh, the ESA were also international present. They had an international presence, so they would know that stuff like, say, China has done things to implement these things, right? And casinos are not for making money. People go to casinos to enjoy the moments of the thrill. Exactly. And that's what loot boxes are, are designed to be as well. You ever wonder why loot boxes are explosive and they have those 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 effects like you were like you were in a slot machine? Well, those endorphins and those and those uh, chemicals in your body that get the thrill out of winning when you get something out of a gambling sit out of a gamble. That's they know um, that they do this. Chris Lee has actually said that companies like EA get psychiatrists and psychologists to try to find ways to make these systems make them be the most feeling good as best as much as they can to make them feel like they want to come back to them fuck you just wrap it up then um i guess for bruce one more time um is there an age the either the ESRB, as you had referred to earlier, or the industry has identified as appropriate to play games with these sorts of loot boxes? Again, I would go back to the rating system. I think the classification identifies what, 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 those, what those categories would be. Okay. Again. Okay. Again, he is answering the question of what is regulating, what is the age appropriate to have play a game that has loot boxes in it answer oh uh you could go to the esrb ratings and see what games you can and can't play when you're a kid except that games like overwatch which are rated teen have loot boxes you have games like that are mature rated that have loot boxes in them i think there's even games with e for everyone that have loot box and money microtransactions in them as well so uh no the esrb having the rating system does not answer the question you are not answering the question you are deflecting back to the esrb the problem with the loot boxes according to saturnite is that our children don't have those minds set as to what they really so they really abuse it of course but these companies that the ESA are composed of, they don't care. They don't care who's paying for the microtransactions or the loot boxes. They don't care. All they care is that they're getting money hand over fist constantly. And that's all they care about. 
and the most of the gamers don't have the mindset of a casino too so they never going to willingly dare don't know much about the casino system loot boxes are confronting players with that and they know that people will be tricked into that money hold you are 100 100 correct yes they how how would they know all they know is this is this is a gambling light system right correct but if you've never been to a casino you don't know what it is like to gamble obviously this is a thing but these companies they make it so that you as a person who buys and purchases a loot box uh feel that same feeling that you go into a casino obviously it's all by design but they're doing it in a way so that they don't get classified as gambling obviously it's by design because they know that they're not allowed to have gambling mechanics into things that are for children you've banned them from casinos they can't do it so what they've done is that they've taken the casino mechanics and they turned them into microtransactions and and and, and loot boxes oh no it's not gambling because you're getting something in return when you gamble you have the odds to lose but we already discussed what why it is gambling and we won't go over that again but basically uh, mr saturday night has hit the nail in the coffin these people know what they are doing and then if i can pull it up oh, please go ahead uh, i mean if, if i may uh well i mean no go go ahead but oh please either one of you go ahead yes go ahead one of you no, go ahead. I, I, the point, the point is, is that uh, the ESRB has. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's just disheveled. He doesn't know what he's doing there. He's clearly not ready to answer these questions. They even banned the casino in Pokemon. It's a bit sad for veterans, but I don't blame them. Good. Good. Nintendo does not want to be associated with gambling because they know that this is gambling. It's a little shame, but uh, it's, I mean, it's obviously like meant to be innocent. But the thing is that what they're trying to do is they're trying to limit the enticement of children being able to want to go do this in real life. So so good on Nintendo. I actually agree with with this for Nintendo. It's a little sad. It's a little sad for for the veterans. But but you know what? Nintendo clearly cares about the people who are playing their games. And Nintendo is also a part of the ESA. So yes, not everybody in the ESA are are a terrible company there are good companies in this but you know what there's also warner brothers and guess what ea is in this company as well this rating system right Correct. if the esrb were rating loot box mechanics then we wouldn't be here yes thank you if the ESRB was actually classifying a game that has gambling, it would make the purchase of said game aware to the adult. They know that the game now has a system where you can have like gambling like mechanics. That is the point of why they're so bad and enticing for these companies to sell to kids. And that's kind of fundamentally the issue is that is that you um you have these tactics that the gaming community is being increasingly uh, identifying as manipulative. And like I said, this isn't a matter of speculation. Like there's video out there showing the- What EAC is going on, on Mr. TB Bands? Oh, TB, TB, TB Bands 101, welcome. What I am chatting about, uh, we are talking about, uh, what well, we're talking about just to, teal deer basically is um there was a representative of the electronic software association which is uh, the governing body of video games uh went to hawaii to talk to the state rep chris lee and uh he's basically uh ex trying to ex get an explanation as to why uh gambling is not be is, do you guys know if video games are you know being perceived with these loot box mechanics if um what are you guys doing about it what do you guys think about this do you guys think at what age should game should video gamers be exposed to these mechanics stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yes. So, I'm going to link the video here. When I play video games, my plea sometimes erodes into the cavity of my inner soul, and I can never seem to reach the orange juice from the back of the daddy's whip case. <laughs> it's not just like pay to win stuff. We're talking about loot boxes loot boxes in general basically um the e this this dude on the uh the, the the white hair dude is the representative from the esa the esa is the company that has members from electronic arts uh take two interactive warner brothers uh blizzard activision you know companies that implement loot boxes so they're the ones that are supposed to govern this company this the behaviors of things that happen in the video game industry they are also the ones that created the electronic software ratings board which is what rates video games so basically what are what they're saying is is that uh while you know loot boxes yes they are optional and yes they are uh um, they are basically, uh, you know, you don't have to buy a single one to beat the game, but you know, games are still being tailored to you to go get these loot boxes, but it's in, it's in the companies that are a part of the ESA's best interest for loot boxes to never go away. But this guy, Chris Lee, who is a state rep at Hawaii, he's fighting to regulate these loot boxes. He's trying to get loot box drop rates to be exposed. He's trying to get the ESRB to acknowledge that your games have gambling mechanics in them. But the ESRB guy who has probably who has never been in camera to question these things has it's like a deer in headlights. He has no idea idea all of these questions are just going over his head i'm gonna post the entire every link on the show notes of this stream so y'all so could keep an eye here and he's talking about how to design moments of frustration that encourage you to buy loot boxes and allow me to finish the point so it when when uh star wars battlefront 2 an ea game came out and let me remind you that Electronic Arts is a part of the re of the organization that this gray haired dude's a part of. One thing that really shocked players was one, loot boxes directly affect your ability to progress in the game, right? Two, and this is the thing that really got people's attention, was that when you are killed in the game, there is a screen that shows you what power-ups that are available <laughs> in the loot boxes were used to, uh, to defeat you in the game. So like that, you know, there is a direct line between the the things that the CEO was saying and the mechanics that were eventually implemented. Good. Yes. This isn't much of a conspiracy theory, really. It's just common sense. If the ESA is composed of people like EA that put microtransactions into your game purposefully for you to... Um, yeah, the ESA uh, and the ESRB are the ESA and the ESRB. Uh, they're both accountable. So, so basically, the ESA created the ESRB. Yes, I know, right? He's that little baby in the back is needs to. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I'm sorry. Omen is the ESA, but but the thing is that the ESA uh, is the is the governing body. But they, but they also created the ESRB. So in essence, the ESRB is the ESA kind of at the same time. But what I'm saying is that if your company, if you're the ESA and you have members who are composed of these companies that implement these loot box mechanics, this lobbyist is is in is in is going to bat for these companies. So basically, uh. Mm, tempting, but I don't know. Is it wrong that I sell Rocket League loot boxes rewards on eBay? <laughs> and just, just for correction, when that came out, wasn't that in beta form? And I think when you came back from the from the gamers that it wasn't put in the final game? Yeah, uh, no. Uh, that was in the beta, 
and then it got made worst when the game was released. <laughs> the, when, yes, that is correct. Okay. And I believe there's been statements right, released so I, from I, EA just, just in the last few weeks saying they're returning those mechanisms to the well, game. Well, that I'm not aware of. But I, just, just so we're clear, so when that did come out, it was in beta form, and they did hear back that, um, so they took it out. Sure. I appreciate this, Chair. Let me just wrap up. Uh, yeah, they did take the microtransactions out, but they're going to put them back in. <laughs> no, I'm not Drake's brother, but it's it's been kind of known that I kind of look like him. I don't I don't see the the distinction. Uh, whether or not uh, you know individuals, some families or some parents feel um, having their children have access to loot boxes and that sort of thing and paying for it is appropriate or not. Um, uh, can, where would a parent go to find out whether or not a particular game they're looking at buying um, would be appropriate to that site. in that context? To the site. To where, to where is that? Uh, I can give you the entertainment software reading website. I can then, give you that address. Mm, let's see. Uh, earlier you said that the ESRB, and I got this one correct this time Saturday night, uh, did not have a way to distinguish when a game had gambling mechanics or not and he just asked you where do you go to to find out if your game has gambling mechanics you just told him to go to the ESRB site That I'm not awesome. <laughs> I don't know. But as you just said earlier, they, they don't rate that, so I, I can only assume that they don't. Sure. Oh, okay, so you know that they're not being that they're not there. So why are you giving them the ESRB site? Sure. So if, if you're in a store here, let's say GameStop down the street, and um, you're looking at buying a game, uh, is there anything on the game box that will tell you whether or not it's appropriate in that not context? Not that I'm aware of. No, absolutely not. Man, that baby. Come on, babe. That baby. Can we calm that baby? Can someone calm that baby? Loot boxes aren't the issue as you need a credit debit card to set up the payments anyways. It's the games themselves. In protest, let's all smash our consoles and PCs. <laughs> no, that is uh, too expensive and I'm not going to be able to do that. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. I love video games too damn much to do that. Hell no. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. There's a long way for this bill and the others yet to go. And uh. Hmm. And this nah. is a new issue, and it's going to take nah. time to address it. But this is you're in the wrong place if you want that. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Questions. But that's kind of the end of that video. So, uh, but yes, I will link that if you are all interested. Uh, but, uh, anyway, <laughs> no, this ain't drama alert. I'm sorry. That's on YouTube. You know, that failing platform that they're trying to make sure they do away and turn it into a TV show. That's where they're, that's where they're at. So basically, uh, yep. That was, uh, it, uh, short answer short teal deer version uh the esa don't see uh much of a problem and of course they wouldn't see much of a problem because why would they see a problem they're a member of that same group of developers that are implementing these mechanics for you to buy and i've already gone to over it over it over it over i'm not gonna go over it again so sorry <laughs> but anyway um now funny enough i am not totally against uh the idea i mean like i get that there are companies that want to make money i get it they want to pay make it so that you give more options dlc they want to expand their game fine and you want and yes loot boxes are completely optional but again when you make your design your games to revolve around them like battlefront 2 was that's just uh what they're all against here <laughs> so but anyway uh <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and uh, move on to we're gonna move on a little bit quicker for this here because you get to because speaking of the esa's uh current member ea they you have a chance to play the next battlefield at ea play 
which is of course the place where they have the ea conference which is e3 yes they're going to be in the hollywood Palad palladium which uh, they're going to have be uh, offering their conference there. They're going to be allowing you to play their latest money-making microtransactions, loot box games, tons of stuff. I can't wait for the conference. And add a sprinkle. Of <laughs> yes. Yeah, so if you are so interested to stay informed with EA and their dishonest practices in the video game industry of what they're going to be promising you down the road and they're not going to give for you, you'll be more than happy to go to this site if you want to. So yeah, safe to say that I am going to be looking at this with, you know, with interest here. So not really that uh, excited about that, but can't wait to hear Andrew Wilson talk about about that. Why? I have no idea. Well, I'm so happy that they make you your soul itch. That's 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 what they're there for. That's what they are there for is to make everybody's soul itch. Now, now all you're looking at is my eyebrows. <laughs> yeah that do you like <laughs> so uh night dive who we recently talked about that they said that they were apparently not looking to they were they had to uh put their uh put a game in hiatus earlier their their first uh, system shock remake but that doesn't mean that they're done because they're going to be releasing uh the first and the second Tura games for the next uh for the next generation here which by the way i did this is one of the first games that i beat on the stream and i am currently still working on this one but which i definitely recommend you guys to play this one is a little bit more linear to rock kind of weird that it's called to rock and not to rock dinosaur hunter but what abs what abs and then there's Turok two seeds of evil which is freaking fucking violent as all hell so there is that so the announcements i'm pretty sure that they're going to be announcing those games coming down here uh they've got a couple of um yeah those just are two really good games so definitely looking looking into that here uh okay what is going on here uh wait a minute uh, uh nope and uh let's go ahead and uh continue with the next one which i'm actually super happy about this one as they uh remember when uh you know they were saying it's like let's not drop the uh the mechan like the drop rates well thank you riot because they have explaining they're explaining their version of that it's the hextech crafting guide and look at that here is the drop rates you know how hard was that how hard was that you see that was that so difficult like people just want to know what are the odds when you're doing the hex techs and there you go and look at that look at that more drop rates so there you go <laughs> oh man so let's uh go oh wait hold on oh we have technical difficulties hold on here yeah oh okay let's go ahead and pause this damn you ign why do you do this to me okay so uh yeah we don't we are just going to uh there we go okay so yeah for some reason ign was just giving me some issues today so but there you go metal gear survive makes you pay ten dollars for a new save if you don't want to delete your existing character and yes this is real if you are going to create a brand new character so far in metal gear survive you are only allowed to have one character on the game so if you want to create a new character 
for a terrible game like Metal Gear Survive, you have to pay, you have to pay like, uh, I think it costs a thousand survival coins, which means that if you want a thousand survival coins, you have to buy the microtransaction of a thousand one hundred and fifty of these, which is ten dollars. And you have three slots. And of course, microtransactions are galore throughout the entire game but the fact that you now have to pay about thirty dollars to get extra gaming save slots <laughs> oh, 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 oh my fucking jesus christ you you motherfuckers <laughs> you motherfuckers seriously oh dear lord dear fucking lord so on this one we're i'm gonna link in this article for uh for rock paper shotguns article which is a couple of uh, questions about the final fantasy 15 windows edition we've been talking about this we talked about the benchmarks we talked about the requirements that that game's gonna have we talked about final fantasy 15's ports to the games um it 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 requires quite a bit of em enhancements to actually uh freaking like make the game work on a computer but honestly uh here is where they go talking about uh there's uh the uh the lead produced programmer Takesh uh Takeshi Aramaki and the game design development uh Man manager Kenichi Shida and their translators discussing about uh, w you know what were things that prompted you to make the PC version of the game and how do you go about making the PC version of it feel like it's a Final Fantasy game differences of the actual game itself and it's safe to say that the PC version of this game is going to be superior in pretty much every way look every way as good and as great better implement a couple of technologies that Nvidia has on their on their stuff like game works however it's it requires a lot <laughs> you mean the the minimum requirements is it's a it's a pretty big card uh, so, so that's punishing enough as it is. So, uh, I'm gonna skip a couple of these because uh, the, we are that last video took a little bit of time here. And of course, what's cool is that there is going to be a playable demo for Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition. It looks like uh, next Monday, which is tomorrow, according to what they've said, there's going to be a free playable demo for Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition, which is going to be available. And it says that it's going to be available on the Steam page and you'll be able to obtain the entirety of chapter one. So, wow. Yeah, it, that's uh, that's pretty cool. I played Final Fantasy uh, 15 a little bit here and chapter one's pretty decent sized. I think the requirements of that game, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I, th I think you need like a, like a, like a, not, a 970 is, is not, is not even a part of the minimum requirements. The 970 was like, is what I have. And that used to be at one point the best, uh, card, you know, like, uh, not the best cart in the market but for your money that was the one that a lot of people rec were recommending but it's it's needs more <laughs> so it looks like um it's going to give you an option to play uh the first chapter so we'll see if it can handle it according to the benchmarks according to the benchmarks looks like if i just played in um if i just played the game at 1080p uh only on high settings um full screen and standard that should do the trick so and of course because steam constantly wants us to know that this game is never coming out you can get a freaking skin that has that sake like of the players who purchase final fantasy on Steam before main first, you'll be eligible to claim the Half-Life pack. This does not include Half-Life 3. Don't ask for it. <laughs> and the last piece of information for Final Fantasy 15 
uh, I think, <laughs> is that it's not going to have the Nuvo, which is the Nuvo is supposed to be some kind of uh, anti piracy software that gets implemented into it, but apparently it's got game breaking stuff into it, and apparently it's it causes like issues with games i don't really know what's that well but denuvo but it's garnered enough enough stuff that apparently they've decided to not add denuvo in final fantasy 15 so thank you thank you for not implementing that <laughs> oh no it isn't the last thing because apparently final fantasy 15 is going to go on forever which apparently they've got four add-ons in the future they're gonna go up to like 2019 so this whole next year and next year as well it's going to be tons of more dlcs i mean you've got episodes centered on gladiolus prompto ignis uh but apparently they're gonna be releasing three more dlcs they're committed to releasing three and then the first will focus on Arden, Arden, like the main villain of the game, but it looks like there's going to be, they're going to be focusing on doing even one more, which, so they're going to go for four DLCs that are going to go on for the whole of next year. So you guys want to do Final Fantasy 15. That's, that's where you got to do. So of course, because of course I said it was going to be over, of course, look at that. Gordon Freeman Gordon Free John Freeman the brother of Gordon Freeman has decided to go into the world of Final Fantasy to find his brother Gordon when he found his brother he apparently went up to try to find the monsters he's fighting with his crowbar he's fighting yes here it is this is the closest you are all gonna get to Half-Life 3. Full life consequences. <laughs> and hey, you know what? I'm fine with the chat going crazy. It's it's all good. It's a it's a fun, it's a fun place. There are limits, but you know. <laughs> it's all cool. And of course, I'm super excited about this freaking game. And this is my bay. This is I my bay. This is my baby. Oh lord. I am super excited for Soul Calibur, and it's going to come out on PC as well. So, oh. Uh, that. Oh. Escape is futile. Oh, yeah. It's over for you. Oh, my God. Woo. I'll make you submit. Whoa! Enjoy. Okay. Oh. The ill fortunate legend. Let's let's pause this for a second. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Coming to 2018. Very very excited about Soul Calibur. Very very excited. And today we're gonna do a little more. This is something I was curious about as well, too, because... It seems Pikachu has indeed lost his memory. What? Humans cannot be trusted. What is wrong with your face? I can simply destroy everything with this. No, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. I knew you were the tedious type. What? What was that? Did just does Pikachu just talk like Danny DeVito? Wow. It's been two months since my dad disappeared. I've come here to Rhyme City to start looking for clues. <laughs> Pikachu is a detective? I'm a great detective. Detective Pikachu. No, you're not. You're supposed to be with Ash going out on adventures. You're supposed to be going out and helping him become the greatest Pokemon master of them all. Wow. So this is a Pokemon detective game. Okay. Gather testimonies from people and Pokemon. <laughs> okay. Let's play that again. I'm sorry. Let's play that again. I'm sorry. It's coming. 
This is the testimony of the Pokemon. Po guys, I need to know. I need to know who, who killed this. Who killed this man? <laughs> Like they're worried about outsiders. Why is Pikachu talking like a grown man? And why is Ariel from the Little Mermaid in Pokemon? Good idea. We're counting on you. It's it's Ariel. Well, I hope he hasn't come here to search for his father. Oh, Jim Goodman, the detective, right? He's a kid. He's not a detective. He's just a kid with a with a hoodie. They say you're a great detective. But if you don't mind, I'd like to see what you look like on. So I hurt. Like <laughs> Ew. Oh, I like Ivy like that. <laughs> oh, this is so lame. So my dad had an accident while he was on the case investigating a Pokemon. <laughs> Oh no, 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 not the mouth breathing. Smells <sighs> like a case. Oh, this is so weird. Now it's getting interesting. Oh god, Pikachu is wearing a detective hat and he sounds like Eddie Valiant. I believe I've solved the Trevenant Rampage case. Yes, it's it was Sora. This looks like a Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs> these hold it pal hey now who are you wow that 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 is uh that that voice acting <laughs> oh no count me out nope 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 no sir nope nope absolutely not and this is something that i just found out uh this is something from a game called stellaris we are receiving reports that colony europa 7 has in fact been destroyed by an the estimated death toll is in the billions my entire family was the attackers are being called gamma aliens until more information with is this attack we have no choice but to protect our kind by unleashing our almighty weapon upon them summoning the apocalypse Ooh. So this is a game called Stellaris, and you na they now have acquired uh, the ability to have uh, to destroy weapons. This is sort of like a like a resource management game. Stellaris is apparently really really good, and I think it's on sale right now. So it looks really good, but it's kind of like more like resource management and and. Uh, I don't know, I'm not good at those games, but... <laughs> well, I'm almost, I'm almost finished, but if, you need, if you're very tired, I don't blame you, zombie. Thank you, thank you for joining me. If you wanna, uh, as always, your, your presence here is always, is always appreciated. Definitely. I like this. I like this. I might give Stellaris a try. I think that game I won't be able I won't stream it, but Stellaris is is kinda like a kinda like a, a game that's just a bit too demanding here. And this is Immortal Unchained. Which is being called Dark Souls with guns. In an age long since forgotten. A prophecy once told that there would come a time when the sun would grow dark and cold and the dead would rise. Okay, so it's dead space. Warriors of legend would awaken. So it's a doom. But black of heart they would be. Beasts would flood the soil with their poison. Oh. Oh, okay. This is basically...
basically... Yeah, this is basically Dark Souls with the ability to... Instead of magic, I think it's like shooting people. This this looks really cool. I mean, I like the Surge as well, too. I like Dark Souls and the Surge, but this game looks pretty sweet. This is the day of prophecy. Yeah, even you even got the big the big uh, armored dudes with the shields. This is the end of times. This is the best of times. This is the worst of times. Ooh, sign up for the PC Alpha. I'm gonna have to look into that here. Let me see if uh, let me see if they've got that listed there in the store here. In more okay immortal unchained there we go let's uh let me add myself a follow and uh now i could uh i could see what's going on with that okay so what well, we're uh <laughs> so there we go now uh the last the last thing uh that's actually the very last bit of uh, of news. So I had to skip a couple of things because the uh, the video that we discussed earlier ran a little long. But uh, I do actually want to read a little bit more of the uh, as I said the Gamma Sutra article, which is called uh, "The Fire Fades: Dealing with the Scourge of Burnout in Game Development." And this is the reason that I'm reading it is because. And so that you guys could get a little bit of an understanding of what it is like to be a part of the gaming industry or just getting into the gaming industry as well. So things are are definitely uh, are definitely there. So yeah, the chat was kind of crazy. Those guys just kind of came out of nowhere. There, there was one guy that called me once Fat Drake, <laughs> and um, I was like, uh, huh. People were like at the office, like you just change your 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 video, ch your channel to your stream to Fat Drake. But I'm not going to do that because then they'll just want me to do hotline bling all the time. So <laughs> damn you, Drake. So uh, this is uh, we read a couple of days ago uh, up to here, but I'm going to I want to read a little bit and offer a couple of a little bit of my opinions of this. So basically, um, uh, within the game industry, burnout is especially common. In graduate school, I was pushed to work myself to the bone, and I did. It was a year and a half accelerated master's degree program at the Guildhall at SMU, says Tanya Short of Kit Fox Games. Although classes were of a standard length, assignments and projects easily ate up 60 to 80 hours every week for the whole 18 months. It became I've became ve I've become very sensitive to how the quality of my work suffers when I'm not well rested physically or mentally. In the latter half of 2016 in the first half of 2017, I I took Sausage Sports Club to several PAX conventions, these being big marketing and networking opportunities. I, of course, wanted to push to make the game as polished as possible, says Chris Wade of Lockshot Games. Each time one of these events would come around, I'd spend two plus weeks more the show before the show, overworking myself every day. The mean it that means long hours, not spending time with friends and my then girlfriend, and just generally failing to make care to take care of myself and living space then the event comes and there's more crunch like living with booth prep set up and having to be on all day every day demoing the game each at each convention all of that combined to make me a ball of stress and anxiety and dead brained and then i'd hope to be and be useless for a few days and then close to useless for a few weeks and oops now the next pax is in a month here we go again he continues and uh that's actually pretty heartbreaking and it continues on to say that every developer reached out 
to this or uh, for this article could rhyme off at least one story of a time they had worked themselves into burnout struggling to meet deadlines or fighting to push themselves to certain goals and it took minutes to find enough developers to fill an article and their examples could be easily go on to pages and pages so yes so there's there's basically uh it's kind of heartbreaking and that's that's a big reason why i wanted when i was a kid i wanted to make video games i wanted to make video games and at the time they couldn't afford to get me to a place where i wanted to where i could learn how to make video games and then i found out and then a friend of mine once told me that you know i wouldn't want to make video games because they just take the fun out of playing them well when you're working 60 to 80 hours a week for 18 months making video games i would think the last thing you want to do is look at a controller look at a keyboard i mean that is i mean i work 40 hours a week and it's enough of a stress a stress inducement and it already feels like the time that i have sometimes slips from me because of work but the fact that these guys work two weeks in one week in comparison to me it's it's just incredible it's just absolutely incredible it's it's just beyond baffling uh holmes illustrates a bit of what is happening to these developers and many others in burnout i though i'm not a medical clinician i'm pretty sure that burnout has not yet become an official medical term or diagnosis um, it's a sad irony, but it makes sense given that it's more of a slang term, one that the medical community is intimately aware of and many, as many of them suffer from it themselves. That's especially true of people who work in the field of psychiatry and behavioral health where burnout amongst clinicians is both highly prevalent and largely met without any sort of intervention or positive change there is a glucomate in our brains that gets burned every time we have to make a decision with the more stressful decisions requiring more of the stuff that minor or inconsequential ones run out of that glucomate and people may find themselves staring staring at wall for hours as the, uh, at the end of the day unable to even decide to get up and go to bed as they've thrown out the chemicals you need to make minor decisions like that yeah it really demotivates people to actually play the games and your value of a game really changes yes exactly yeah I mean, when you're making when you're making a video game and you're putting this much stress and your health goes down as well too your health suffers incredibly because of this medically a developer that has been working themselves to the bone to accomplish a task in a far too small window may well have run out of the chemical in their brain that allows them to make decisions they have pushed themselves into a position where even the smallest call is just about impossible considering how taxing this is on the mind it is frighteningly common problem for game developers in the industry this can happen for financial and employment reasons according to holmes any big money industry that that a lot of young optimistic people want to join is going to end up having a high burnout population when supply for eager and willing applicants is larger than the demand of these jobs for these jobs employers will inevitably squeeze their staff as tightly as they want without risk of ending up with unfilled positions in the company for any prolonged periods of time I know someone who works indirectly for video games, drawing, pixeling, and spriting stuff, and he says himself that he can't even evaluate a video game like he did before. Yeah, yeah, because now you know, because now you know what it takes to make a video game. Now you know what's in that with ingredients. It's like, for instance, like if you know, if you if you go to your favorite restaurant, and they tell you that the best secret ingredient is something that you could make yourself then why would you go to this restaurant anymore you see it for a different it's not a special anymore so 
so yeah so i don't i don't blame uh your friend for seeing things uh in a different light it it, it does push people to, away from video games kind of like uh my friend noah who says that he works with computers so much he prefers he knows that playing with pcs is better but he doesn't do it on pc because he doesn't want to keep staring at a computer screen all day because it's he's just working all the time expectations within your industry fearing and missing out and crunch culture seems to be the most common themes around burnout we are constantly told that we are lucky to work in games that our jobs are dream jobs and that we should be grateful to work in the field this is especially true for prestigious franchises where there is a long line of developers waiting to take your place if you can't take the pressure and that's a little disconcerting because like for instance if you play a game like from cd project red like the witcher 3 you'll hear that the development cycle of that game is actually quite bad it was quite uh stressful and at times it did look they it looked like they over exceeded themselves to the point where they were heading towards that crunch so yeah it's it's definitely uh, uh so but but as you said like they glamorize game development they glamorize video game making and they glamorize it to the point where th they make it so that the demand is there but uh and then there's so many people that are going there so so that's why you always see this attrition rate being so high in video game projects because of the burnout being so badly and then all of a sudden you get video game makers who are just like oh you know what if you can't handle it we've got like 10 other artists out there that could work so uh now this puts the pressure on developers to perform in the indie space there will always be someone out there pushing to have a game out there before you forcing you to work doubtedly hard to get your game out in the time we will succeed otherwise all your years developing it has been wasted in larger companies a developer may feel that they're easy to replace should they stop working so hard or complain that they're being overworked as there are so many others looking to work in the industry our corporate structures encourage trading in the quality of life of our workers in exchange for increased value to shareholders as individuals we buy into it because it's a one-two punch of starving artists meets silicon valley where ambitious intelligent creative and both north american and japanese cultures confuse industriousness working hard with actual productivity producing results I wrote an article on why some people choose to destroy themselves from plausible deniability to sunk cost fallacy, but none of those are particularly unique to games. And this one is, uh, looks like it's an article uh, that's on Waypoint, which is the curious appeal of crunch, which is, I don't know if this is, this is Waypoint. Um, so maybe we'll look into this a little bit later, but we're gonna, we're gonna, we're almost done with, with the part that we're going to talk about today here. Uh, but pushing, but pushing oneself too hard has become a part of games culture itself in a culture that ionizes the all the all night coding session there is almost a romantic quality to overworking when it is anything but healthy within the gaming industry burnout is especially common it may have to do with the fact that for a long time embracing or even glorifying a lack of self-care has been a big part of games cultures of course there isn't really just one games culture anymore but that's a whole other conversation the uh, t -t 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 -t. Of course, there are uh, there is that alluring feeling of flow that so many game makers push themselves to achieve during marathon work sessions, and it just kind of keeps going and going and going, and it just kind of continues to perpetuate this thing. So basically, um, yeah, the the game crunch is common, high demand, and the gaming industry it almost makes it feel like it's not even really a dream job it's just like a torturous grind 
constant, repetitively. Just, I mean, I like it. I mean, my eight hour workday goes really quick because I love what I do. But if you're doing this constantly for even more time, working an equivalent of two weeks in one, you won't have time and I, and apparently it doesn't even you don't even get weekends so you're always on constantly and it's being glamorized as this thing where you know uh you should be fortunate and lucky you're part of the gaming industry there's not many people are a part of the gaming industry right but there should be control to this. They should get more people to work on these games instead of having a backlog of people that are waiting for you to quit because you'll be frustrated with the project. No, you should have more developers or just not push them to make these games faster because it's gonna hurt them. Now, people who love to play and eventually to make video games are almost always driven by the urge to enter the flow state, the frame of mind where you are being challenged at just the right level to keep you fully engaged in an activity, a place that exists in the balance between being utter stimulated and overwhelmed. The, for athletes, getting to that flow state can mean jogging at just the right pace, with care, which can be great for their health until they blow out their knees and they can't run anymore. After that running will just damage their bodies more while not running will leave them depressed and listless their ability to hit the flow state through running is destroyed by the physical pain and this related anxiety that comes from their injuries Ashley Goldbold, Godbold, senior programmer at GameSpark can vouch for this many developers myself included can get so hyper focused on a task that their own bodily needs are forgotten i constantly forget to eat or drink because i've been so in the zone as you can imagine my mental health is also forgotten gaming and game development are different in that they offer both an opportunity to enter the flow state and a naturally occurring anesthesia to any psychological injury so you may sustain in the way anything that causes you to forget that you physically exist and that your physical physical existence comes with psychological and emotional needs can be like a pleasant smelling poisonous gas the smell masks the damage being done to you as you breathe it in similarly the way games and game developments transport us and immerse us can make us forget to take care of ourselves the reasons burnout can occur are beyond numerous and again almost any developer can call up a time when they've overworked themselves for any number it is a constant problem and the next time we'll discuss the part where it says uh where they talk about self-awareness and uh I think more developers can be a problem, more time is a better situation, but there is the pressure coming from the gamer community itself since the demands are becoming more and more pressuring and with the demands. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately that's true too. Uh, the pressure from gaming journalists, publishers, the gamers, the people from YouTube, they're wondering when this game is going to come out. Obviously, that pressure comes from the top. The top keeps telling the bottom that, hey, you what? You need to get this game done. We need to get this game done by then. You need to get this gun, the game done by then. No vacations, no holidays, uh, no breaks. Or, or they, I mean, obviously, I don't think that they could tell you you can't take a break. I think that's illegal. You're supposed to have a, a legally assigned break period um <laughs> but honestly um but yeah it's a big problem when burnout becomes a thing that you could just talk to a developer and expect it to be something normal god that's that's just not the right way but more time and you should educate and focus on making sure that these pressures these outside pressures don't interfere with your job 
because what should matter in your gaming studio is what happens inside but because they've put themselves out there they should not encourage that they should encourage to just keep things inside the actual company so that way you don't find yourself feeling the outside pressure but still it's still there and unfortunately this is this is an ongoing problem and Unfortunately, this uh, this will not change unless the guys from the top actually start giving a crap. But as I discussed earlier, the guys at the top don't really give a crap about the people who buy their games. So what makes you think that they give a crap about the people who work on them? Like EA, for instance. Like so many people want to work for EA for some goddamn reason. And they're like... Oh well, you can't handle it. I'm sorry, you can't handle it. So so we're we're going to we're going to we're going to just have to get somebody else to come in here. That's that adds to the problem. So but anyway, uh, that was uh, that was the end of, of today's live cast. Um, my goal is to do this between an hour and a half to two hours. We just went a little over a half. I, ha I caught a couple of things that we didn't talk about. I do have to uh, get myself going. I'm going to a friend's house in a little bit. But I'd like to thank everybody that joined. Thank you, Zombie, once again. Thank you, Nick that kind of came in and vanished i don't know where you went <laughs> but saturday night thank you for sticking with me uh you are uh, you are a consummate dude you're a consummate bro you are awesome thank you <laughs> deserving of being the first in the discord so oh because he wasn't uh he wasn't uh oh okay i ah i didn't know he was there <laughs> okay Oh, actually, I think he he did tell me he was staying with 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 her during the weekend. I'm sorry, I just forgot. So, but anyway, thank you anyway, Nick, for joining me in, and as always, Mr. Saturday Night, thank you, and thank for everybody who posted crazy stuff on the chat. <laughs> um, none of it was relevant, but I'm glad that you all had fun at least posting. So, anyway. Uh, I'm glad that you guys find me amusing, but if you guys uh, do cross over here and you want to keep on chatting, hey, follow, give me a follow and that's all I ask. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm going to cut it today. Of course, all the links are going to be below. Hey, hello. Hello, Exotic Reflect. Awesome name. <laughs> Off topic, it's also important for a stream to make it interesting. Of course, off topic stuff is 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 something that I'm still learning how to do. I'm a noobler, so. But uh, I was just talking about, um, yeah. So what's going on? Uh, nothing. Uh, we were just putting the finishing touches of today's stream. What I do here is uh, um, I not only stream myself playing video games, but today I was covering some some news, uh, reacting to some videos, talking about things that are happening in the gaming industry. And um, I was just coming to the very end. We do this every Sunday and every wednesday we do this on sunday at 11 a.m eastern uh, standard time and every wednesday at 8 a.m eastern standard time so what i do is i find a couple of articles that interest me a couple of news things that are happening in the video game industry and like a podcast similar to a video podcast i take these uh, these articles uh, react to video game like today we were we were reacting to uh chris lee which is the representative uh a state representative in hawaii who is uh who is fighting to try to get legislate le legislation to combat loot boxes and um gambling in video games uh and also to talking about uh stuff like how rhode island was trying to enact a bill to tax violent video games to pay for mental health and talking about uh burnout in the video game industry this is kind of sort of what what i like to do just talk about stuff in the in the world of gaming i am streaming you streaming <laughs> well thank you um 
So uh, I am sorry that we came to an end, but if you'd like to see what we talked about, I'm going to be ending the stream in a moment, and this will be available as a video that you could watch. Uh, you want to skip the first 30 minutes because that's just the countdown of me coming in to, to start the stream. So after that, um, obviously it's going to get muted because a lot of the music that I played was obviously copyrighted, but... The rest of it is is all stuff that we have this that we're discussing, especially like that we were that what I was discussing that video. It's a 13 minute video of, of Chris Lee talking to um to to um to a representative of the Hey Thank you Oh my god Oh my god thank you so much thank you Thank you. Do you stream? Do you stream games, Exotic? Because if you do, let me know and I'll um and I'll put a message here. I'll put a timer up here. You do. Awesome. Awesome. Hold up. Hold up. Not really games? Okay. All right. What do you stream? I'm going to put a let me let me let me make a just talk streams. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. What do you talk about most of the time? Is it IRL or do you talk about, about, uh, can I ask? Because, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, add. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to do, I'm going to do something real quick here. I'm going to, I'm going to do this real time here. Hold on. We're going to we're going to go back here. Hold on just a second here. Let's go to uh you want to see it. Let's go to events. These are my boys. So let's go to um let's go let's borrow What? Okay, hold on. Uh, let me. Oh, whoops! I'm pressing the wrong one. Okay, so let's. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. This is uh. Oh, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I am doing uh. Oh, you'll watch. You'll see in a second. Exotic. Reflect. One second here. Okay. Okay. All right. Exotic reflect is here. This is awesome. You'll watch. Let's see if it works. Make sure to. Huh? Ah. Exotic. Talk about. Yeah. So just. You should. Def I'm definitely going to. Okay. You'll see in just a second. All right. All right. Okay. Go ahead and type something exotic. Let's see if this happens. There it is. And there is, uh, that's what I just did. I set up an event. That's what's called uh, an event uh, on the chat bot. So every time you sign in, we got some peeps here. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to click on the link. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I want to click on the, or is a click on the, okay. I'm going to click on the link now and, uh, exotic and I am gonna give you a follow as well there we go 
and I just followed you. So, and I've also set it so that uh, that now you can uh, I can actually um, you know like when I get a notification and you show up, I can actually like can see what I'd like to talk about because cool. I mean we're fellow streamers. We're all here to support each other except saturday night because he doesn't stream but he helps a whole bunch this dude this dude is is freaking awesome but yeah i was just setting up that's that's using the application that's called uh uh um where is hold on are you did you just a minute oh no i lost the application <laughs> okay hold on uh okay so uh the application won't come up Okay, never mind. But anyway, uh, but yes, uh, this is what we talk about. Um, if you want to check out the past couple, uh, yes, my 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 friend Saturday night, he he creates clips uh, for me when he streams, so you could check out the the clips collections. A lot of that stuff is all him, so you could check out the clips from from me, and also you could check as well uh, things like. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's all good for some reason I can't get a uh, stream lapse to come up is, is stream lapse gone oh never mind okay so but basically yeah that's that's in a nutshell uh, what I was basically doing I um, and I do this as I said every every Sunday and every Wednesday so uh and i also uh i also uh have a have a twitter as well so if you'd like to know what is happening with the channel if i make announcements like say i'm gonna have to postpone it i'll also announce everybody to do it on twitter so but anyway uh we were we were talking we were all we did what we did today was react to a couple of videos uh talking a lot about final fantasy 15's state uh about metal gear survives uh practices as well as how they were revealing uh loot box uh drop rates as well so that's all really cool uh to me i've been very very fascinated with the video game industry and uh that's that's art <laughs> so uh and i am sorry that you caught us leaving but uh but I, I do encourage you to go to the videos and just watch the last one so you could catch what what we did uh and uh and if you like it definitely uh definitely come and check uh, check me out because i do like talking about video games i do like talking about stuff about the gaming industry uh stuff about you know like things that that um that you know that bother me about about game developers about about the games that you play about the games that i play uh about the games uh saturday night he's he's also quite uh quite a smart a smart person i mean he provides a ton of of information and feedback and we discuss it and we keep the conversation going so this is a work in progress as well too <laughs> i've only been doing this for just a couple of weeks so clearly i am working on improvements so um like sound wise video wise um what video games do i play um well i play games like uh i play games like uh i play games like overwatch i play games like uh final fantasy 12 i play games like turok dinosaur hunter i play first person shooters i play heroes of the storm i sometimes play league of legends i've been playing dark souls i play games like uh enter the gungeon rogue legacy uh i don't own a switch yet but once i own a switch i'm gonna buy it i'h uh, gonna buy a switch and i'm gonna start streaming me playing the switch i'm gonna I'm going to have myself play some switch games. Um, I'm also going to get a PlayStation four, uh, which I'm going to play games on the P up on the PS4 as well too. I do play. I, I, I have not played Fortnite so much. I've been playing, I, but I do like Fortnite battle Royale. I've don't play PUBG. I don't own PUBG yet, but I do play, um, Fortnite uh, battle uh, battle royale is a, is a, it's very enjoyable. I do like it. Uh, I do like uh, 
Fortnite. Um, I know the Switch is so good. I want to play. I want to get a Switch. I want to get a Switch. I, I do. I, it's it's on my list. And and upon hearing that the Mega Man Legacy is going to be released on Switch, um, Bayonetta 3 is going to come out, and Bayonetta 1 and 2 are already available. Obviously, Zelda Breath of the Wild, the Mario game, Metal uh, Metroid Prime 4 is a game I'm looking forward to. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a game I want to play. Uh, I also want to... I also like Mario Kart. I like Splatoon. I want to play Splatoon as well, too. I like Splatoon. I really like the Splatoon. I played it... I played Splatoon at CEO, and then uh, I, I played it at my friend Matt's house. Uh, I, I I love the Switch. The Switch is incredible. I want a Switch, but uh, I have to actually get the money, <laughs> the money to get the Switch. So what I'm gonna do is, um, when I do my taxes, I'll get money and I'll be able to get a Switch. I might be able to get a PlayStation Four, and I might be able to get a capture card to make all of that happen, as well as a as a Switch, so that I'll be able to play those. What games do you play? Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm assuming you play Fortnite, but uh, what else do you play? Exotic. I think we lost Saturnite. Saturnite might be no. He's probably on another stream. He loves watching streams. My boy Saturnite. He watches. Uh, he watches. He likes to hop from stream to stream. <laughs> Obviously, I play the Legend of Zelda. I am a huge uh, Legend of Zelda uh, fan. And uh, once I get my Switch, I will be playing Legend of Zelda. I will be streaming it. I play Overwatch, uh, Fortnite. I like Rocket League as well too. Rocket League is fun, super, super fun. I really do like Rocket League. I, I enjoy playing Rocket League. Um, I don't play it as much, uh, but I uh, Overwatch is my, if I were to pick a game that I play almost religiously, I've been playing like Overwatch since it came out. Since it came out a couple of years ago, I've seen all the changes. Well, I, I asked Exotic Saturday night. He's, he's the new guy. He's the new follower. I'm trying to get to know, I'm trying to get to know Exotic. I know you. <laughs> but Saturday night, what games, what you could, but Exotic doesn't know what games you play. So, uh, oh no. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you, uh, Exotic, uh, you're going to have to ask permissions to post links. I'm sorry. I still haven't figured that out, but uh, hold on. I could uh, give me one second here. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, uh, permit Exotic Okay. That allows you to share one link. Obviously, uh, we're gonna have to work on that, but uh, you can try posting it again. You can try reposting. <laughs> oh, there we go, cool. Okay, so what is a, oh, it's a Discord. Okay, let's take a look. Fortnite group by Exotic. You have been invited to in the Fortnite group. What do you think, Saturday night? Should I accept? Do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Should we trust Exotic? <laughs> Is the wrong one? Uh, okay. If you want to send it again, hold on. I just have to permit you again. Uh, exotic reflect. Okay, if you could if you could set it again, uh, you can. Uh, I could try to look into it here. <laughs> it's all good. So, so Saturday night. What games do you play? Because I think Exotic wants to know what games you play too. Saturday night is uh, is not a fervent streamer, but uh, he does play games. So clearly, uh, clearly the you can't find it. That's okay. 
it's all good uh we'll uh what you could do is uh if you find the link later exotic you could just uh you could you could actually whisper it to me you could just whisper the link to me and i'll and i'll take a look at that of course so so definitely um yeah so if you can't find it now that's all good so you could always like get it to you later i just uh just created that here so um actually um Yes, so as you can see, Mr. Saturnite plays a lot of a lot of uh, Japanese RPGs. Uh, he plays a lot of bullet hell games. He plays uh, he plays a lot of Monster Hunter as well too. He loves Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter, um, Monster Hunter World is a game that I am considering in getting. And if I get myself a PlayStation Four, I get myself Monster Hunter World. I think I'll get myself that. Uh, so I, I get my, my, my copy of Monster Hunter World because I'm playing Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on the 3DS XL. So the new 3DS XL, the new one. So, so there is that as well too. Yeah, he plays a lot of Monster Hunter. Uh, oh yeah, I, I already follow the Overwatch League. <laughs> I already follow the Overwatch League, and uh, uh, I uh, I use the money that the yeah. Oh yeah, uh, the Overwatch. Okay, so you found it. Hold on, let me let me let you uh, one second here. Permit exotic okay i wish that there was like a master command to allow everybody to do it but as of now i'm just i'm still just kind of learning how to do it oh you're talking oh that was the link the overwatch league oh yeah i'm follow i follow the overwatch league my boy carpe Carpe is a is yeah, yeah. My favorite guy, but my, my favorite player is Carpe. The dude is just an insane, like one of the most insane widowmakers I've ever seen. Just the man, the man does magic with the hooks, and just how he zooms and shoots people from above is incredible, incredible. Yeah, XQC, XQC is a beast. XQC is also a beast. Um, there's this there's this godlike uh, player who who I think picks uh, Zenyatta from the Soul Dynasty. Shao Roy, the, he has a weird weird name. Shao Roy Roy Zhao Zhao or something. He's apparently one of the best Overwatch players in the world. Rao Zhao Zhao. I'm butchering this man's name. <laughs> Let me um Me actually uh, I'll find his name. Hold on. Uh We're not going to we're not going to watch the Overwatch League now here. Apparently you could get some exclusive loot if you donate to the Overwatch League. Holy moly. Okay. All teams. Let me go to their... How do you go to their website? Overwatch League. Hold on. Overwatch League. Oh, hold on. Overwatch League. And we'll go to the Overwatch League and the Overwatch League. I'm looking for this dude's names. Soul Dynasty. Ryu Zhe Hong. Ryu Zhe Hong. That's the dude. Ryu Zhe Hong. He's like a support. Ryu Zhe Hong. Incredible, incredible support. Love this dude. So, uh, I also like, uh, from 
the I also like uh not Neptuno from the Philadelphia Fusion because he uses uh mercy. Freaking awesome. So Neptuno, they each have their own website. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. So yeah, so and also Shadowburn is is pretty freaking awesome. They each have their own websites. Holy crap. Of course, that's where Carpe is. Carpe is uh, is there, and uh, Neptuno. These guys are awesome. I, I do like the Philadelphia Fusion. It's incredible that we're even talking about this. Like, we have a professional league. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, here. Uh, apparently, they're doing, they're doing good, I think. Uh, it's kind of funny because the New York Excelsior are also a bunch of Korean players. Not a single one of them is a, an American player. The Shanghai Dragons are 0 and 12. Ouch. Our Florida Mayhem. My Florida Mayhem crew. Absolutely uh despicable. Actually, I want to do something real quick here. I want to let me let me see uh I want to I want to create a hotkey for this is the live cast countdown me and page switch and then we want to hide okay uh here and here and here and here okay there we go. So now I've added the ability to hide myself. In, in some cases, um, it's warranted to maybe have this here. But anyway, uh, I am. Uh, I'm actually. I actually do do have to to go. So I'm sorry, Mr. Exotic. I I actually do appreciate you streaming me. So so this is actually really, really awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for doing that. And follow for the follow. Thank you. Uh I do look forward to uh to uh to seeing you later again. So I hope that um I, I really appreciate the support. Thank you so much. And uh if you find that Discord uh, whisper it to me and I'll and I'll and I'll have you there. I'll also send you uh, I'll whisper you the the um, if you're interested to join my streams discord page as well uh, the discord server I mean I'll I'll send I'll pop it in and I'll uh, I'll, I'll uh, so you could join us so and yes pop in and I encourage you to, to come watch uh, the the stuff I do have a playlist of the live casts so I'm gonna add this one soon enough so thank you so much for watching and uh, Mr. Saturday night I, I do bid you good night finally <laughs> uh, it's probably really late over there Mr. Mr. Saturday night where can I ask where where you are from exotic before I let you go I want to, I just want to know how late, how late or early is it wherever you're watching? Because I like to, I, we, I have a kind of like an international kind of amount of a lot of couple of people that are from different parts of the world. So, so, um, so I, just, I, I kind of want to know, I mean, oh my God. Okay. So it's, it's kind of like the evening already over there. So, all right. Well, well, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the support and I bid you a good evening. Um, so yeah, so Saturday night is uh, is a little bit later than you, but he's a he is in Europe land as well. I am in I am in Tampa in the United States of America, God's God's country, God uh, land of the free and the in the home of the brave. <laughs> that's, that's where I live the insane asylum that is the usa <laughs> so there is there's where i'm from so originally i'm from puerto rico so originally i'm from the caribbean so i am uh, now a, a full-blown american no actually i was born an american so there you go but anyway uh yes i'm from murka 
Actually, I'm I'm from I'm from America. I'm actually from. S <laughs> I'm actually sh I should be super careful because the thing is that uh, while I am technically Puerto Rican and an American citizen, uh, I, I I don't know if I pass up pass 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 up as an actual uh, American. I don't know. I do have to be careful. I really do have to be careful. I've been racially profiled before, so I have to be careful. Me, moi, have been racially profiled before. Very little, but it hasn't happened too much, but it's happened. It happened when I first moved here. No big deal. It's, it's, I've gone over it and it doesn't happen everywhere I go. So, although everywhere I go, when I twist my, my hat to the side and I'm wearing a, a jacket, people are thinking, uh Oh, this guy's a, a in trouble, a troublemaker. <laughs> but anyway, uh, exotic, uh, Saturday night again, thank you so much for joining me today and exotic. Thank you for the follow. You guys have a great night. I'm going to leave you guys both. Uh, and of course I want to thank everybody else for watching as always. You guys are all awesome. Every single one of you. Thank you so much for all of your support. You guys have a good evening. Goodbye.